Thank you for asking. I didn't get to choose my parents. I didn't get to choose my gender. And I didn't get to choose what I wanted to study. I was born in Japan, grew up in a house in the posh suburbs of Tokyo. My grandfather hired an architect to specially build it for him. He was the sort of man who prided himself on things and appearances. I always had to conform to the taste of my domineering father and my resentful but silent mother, and I had to perform the role of a good subservient daughter. He demanded my performance of sophistication, which he believed reflected on him. What am I supposed to wear? How do I perform my gender? It was all di dictated by what was palatable to him. When I was two or three years old, my favorite thing was to listen to the vinyl record of Romans for Violin and Orchestra in F major by Beethoven and to pretend that I was a conductor. And the light bulb flashed above my head. I needed the conductor's stick. My mother was in the kitchen preparing the dinner, so I ran to her and asked for a chopstick. I was very excited to swing my own baton to the recording of prominent violinist Yasha Heibetz. But to my dismay, my mother told me that conductor is not a girl's job. Don't be disappointed. Girls can be pianists or violinists, or if you are charismatic and beautiful like Maria Callas, they can be opera singers too. <laughs> okay, Mama, I will be a man when I grow up. <laughs> <laughs> she then tried to explain that one cannot change her gender and we must conform to, to perform to and perform the agenda we were born with. Oh, imagine my disappointment. I was disappointed that I would not be commanding the army of men dressed in black tuxedos with many different kinds of musical instruments. I pissed at my father to give me his neckties and business suit. I knew that my father was a grown man, and grown men wear suits and go to work. I did not want to be like my mother, who stayed at home and cooked, cleaned, and did laundry for my father and grandfather. I loved the delicious dinners my mother cooked for us, but I was not at all interested in how to prepare them. That was not my destiny. Cooking is not my calling. Who decided that women had to do the cooking? Famous women chefs are all men. My parents did not give me the answer that I was looking for. When he came home in the evening, he sat and expected that the dinner would be brought out to him. When I was 14 or 15, my parents asked me what I wanted to study or to prepare for my career. I told them I wanted to be a musician. They decided that that was not a legitimate career option. <laughs> they gave me instruments to create music, yet they dictated how to use them. They convinced me that Music was only a valuable pastime, yet I was not worthy of the investment. They put me down repeatedly that I was not talented enough. They said, it's way too late for you. It is ridiculous for you to dream about such things. You are removed from reality. Maybe I was not Mozart, but I sight read one page of music on the first day of my piano lesson when I was five and played Vivaldi on my violin. They asked me what I wanted to do, then told me I couldn't. Thank you for asking. <laughs> On one occasion, he told my sister and I to play the piano for his guest as entertainment. We had to ask our guests what they wanted to hear. Not that they knew what, I could, uh, what, what we could play, but to demonstrate our humbleness. Naturally, they told us, anything you want to play for us. My sister played first, because she was the younger of the two. She played the slow, melancholic second movement of Beethoven's sonata. So I played Lady Madonna, complete with improvisation and Scott Joplin's The Entertainer. <laughs> he said, 
and you are embarrassing me in front of my American guests. Playing such vulgar music, it's too loud. Why can't you play something soft and nice like your sister? Didn't I get say anything? I learned that day that my sister and I were on the ones. I went to my bedroom and cried in humiliation. He came up to my room and ordered me to come downstairs because I was rude to leave without permission. <laughs> After that, I never performed for his guests. To this day, I have performance anxiety when it comes to playing an instrument. He often equated his upper middle class identity with classical music and disparaged anything that he didn't like. <coughs> My love for Mozart, Beethoven, and Chopin diminished. The sublime beauty of Beethoven's music was tainted for the next 20 years or so. I put it away and left classical music completely for a very long time. When I was 20, I studied to work for IBM. Women were put on the career track to become secretaries. I didn't choose that either, but fighting against the expectation of everyone went nowhere. So I went with it. Does anyone call ages like I do? In the orientation for new recruits, there were classes for how to dress properly for, for the office. They instructed us on appropriate color palettes, combination of our wardrobes and proper hairstyles. Everything. We could choose anything as long as I had, to, I had the approval of the others. Thank you for asking. At least I played that assertive, independent young woman with Virginia Slims in my purse. This was me. Oh, yes. <laughs> and I worship Dolly Parton and Jane Fonda in the film 9 to 5. I even learned to sing the title song like Dolly. Remember the tagline, you've come a long way, baby. The power suits with shoulder pads, Reebok shoes, Virginia Slims. Jane Fonda's workout Vegas, 9 to 5. I bought into the whole nine years. After the workday, female office workers were expected to go to the bar to drink and hang out with other businessmen who treated us like cut their waitresses. I usually had no choice because if I refused, I would be perceived as an antisocial person who didn't want to contribute to the cohesiveness of the work environment. I had to pour beer for everyone on the table because I was the only female in the, in the group. Many times, there were dirty jokes, blatant sexist comments, and quite often, some of them actually rubbing my thighs on my ass. In a small solace, that there were some younger men who asked me what I would like and paid for my drinks, but the men usually ordered almost all other food, drinks, and snacks. Thank you for asking. <laughs> One evening, it had been more than a few hours, I had to beg them to release me because I had to catch the last train at 10.50 p.m. These trains were always nightmarish, packed with drunk businessmen with alcohol in their breath. My bodies pressed against them from all sides. When the train pulled to the station, we ran to the taxi stops. Still, the wait was over 45 minutes. Finally, I got to my parents' home. It was about to be 2 a.m. I was barely able to wash my face and roll into the bed. Not even 10 minutes after that, my father came into my room and punched me on my head three or four times. I was defenseless because I was not expecting it. Do you know what time it is? Why are you drinking so much on weekdays? It is not appropriate. I never stayed after five 5 p.m., I was home at dinner with my family and my daughters. He never used swear words because that was not the sign of a respectable character. That was not palatable to him. How self-righteous of him. He tried to make me feel guilty for not coming home at 7.30 to be with him. Since I missed that unspoken appointed time, in his mind, I deserved to be punished. 
Honestly, I didn't understand what unhinged him that day. Look, punch me all you want. I am not afraid of you anymore. Do you think I enjoy hanging out with those dirty old men? Do you think I wanted to go? Hit me or whatever. Do you think I wanted to work for that company in the first place? I was 23, a grown woman with a respectable job and the income comparable to the lieutenant commander of the Navy. Yet, I was treated like a 15-year-old girl with 10 p.m. curfew. The spot where he punched was swollen. It hurts to this day. Until that day, I adored him, even worshipped him, worshipped him, and I was supposed to be his favorite daughter. That was the last straw, I said to myself. No, that was not how the routine. Finally, it clicked in me that freedom, freedom was not for my father to give. When I quit IBM after six years, I had probably amassed nearly $30,000 in my retirement account. When I married and moved to the U.S., I used it to pay for the down payment on my house. Now, 25 years on, I have been very happy. Uh, now I have a beautiful family of my own, a big house, two cars, a big beautiful kitchen where my husband cooks delicious dinners. <laughs> I am free to pursue my own happiness. I am free to study music. I excelled at it, and I graduated from UCLA with honors with a BA in music history and minor in gender studies. <laughs> <laughs> now I play bass in a Latin jazz group, um, half sport, guitar and violin in a rock ensemble. And I have a beautiful Steinway concert band in my living room, and I play the waltz by Chopin or Beethoven sonatas all I want. <laughs> Thank you for asking. <laughs>